Hello there everyone, your fluffy armchair Admiral Latter is back with some more hot ship action. In today's video we are going to look at one of the basically most famous or most associated with, uh, with the United States uh, battleships, uh, USS Iowa. And basically uh, the ship as a as a ship and and the class as a as a class uh, because uh, USS Iowa was the first ship of its own class and basically it was the last battleship in, in the history of US that was a first ship of its own class uh, as far as I remember anyway uh, there were four Iowa class battleships that were actually in active service uh, of United States Navy. Uh, six were ordered, however two of them, uh, the last one that were actually ordered, were never finished because the war ended and they were not needed anymore so Congress cut the finances for them and eventually they they never entered service. They, most of they were actually not even built. Uh, anyway, right uh, at this moment you should be able to to see what i managed to to achieve so far because new version of the game allows me to to save the design which i'm very happy about <laughs> because it took me a while to to build this ship and i hope i managed to to do a fairly good job in recreating that legendary battleship within uh within the game using tools that that I got available in, in the game. Uh, please bear in mind some of the parameters, well, a lot of ship parameters will differ from what you can find in, for example, uh, Wikipedia page, which I will link in the description down below the video. So you can check out uh, the materials that I've been using. Uh, check out all the references and information about this ship in detail uh, as best as Wikipedia has them. Uh, so yeah, you can read for yourself what kind of statistics this ship should have. I'm gonna read out what kind of statistics it has in the game. Okay, so uh, starting from basic characteristics, uh, I've said displacement at 75,700 tons which is way more than original. Uh, speed is at 32.5 knots, mostly because I can't fit that half more knot uh, within weight limit and, and cost limit of, of that vessel, uh, because I've basically spent all the money that, that I had for, for this build. Uh, I keep range very short because it's not needed for, for the purpose of academy mission and bulkheads at standard, so I got basic protection basically. Uh, when it comes to components, propulsion, uh, I've said geared turbines uh, 2, uh, oil fuel, which was originally used by by, uh, by USS Iowa, uh, induced draft boilers to, to put my engine efficiency to, to appropriate level, auxiliary diesel engine, because Iowa was actually uh, equipped with such, uh, sh advanced propeller shafts because uh, again original had some upgraded stuff in terms of shafts uh, crap armor 4 because I wouldn't be able to, to fit within the cost and USS Iowa was kind of a modern design and, and they had some, some crazy solutions in terms of armor for example armor was actually designed with the ship so when the ship was built in, in the shipyard, it was actually armored as well. So cer uh, certain like internal parts are already armored. It's not added armor later on. Uh, so, so the ship could be like actually better and more detailed uh, in terms of uh, armor layout. Anyway, uh, maximum barbette thickness. Uh, Anti-torp uh, protection 4, which gives us quadruple torpedo bulkheads, 
uh, originally us as iowa also had quadruple uh, bulkheads they were organized slightly different than the ones in the game but yeah eventually uss iowa had such thing uh, triple hull bottom uh, all or nothing armor scheme uh, obviously anti-float three because it's water pumping uh, it gives some ship repairs and as one of the most modern battleships in US Navy I would be surprised if, if USS Iowa wouldn't have any any sort of system to, to prevent floodings uh, it she was definitely equipped with reinforced bulkheads so there is no doubt uh, to, to select this one when it comes to, to ammunition and armament uh, I picked uh, heavy shells uh, I can't take super heavy shells because weight and cost I will go with standard uh, magazine, uh, magazines uh, white powder uh, I I was having a struggle between white powder and tube powder uh, however I decided that uh, that I will go with white powder for my build uh, however tube powder according to description is also a valid option for for that build uh, it's still a smokeless propellant different from cordite and definitely americans didn't use cordite well they didn't produce cordite they eventually got some cordite from from canada uh, at some point uh, but yeah it, it definitely didn't met their expectations uh, so Americans had their own uh, like uh, smokeless propellants that they used and only white powder and tube powder actually match uh, the description of that powder at some point. Uh, when it comes to turret traverse, I've picked advanced hydraulic turrets uh, to, to increase turret traverse a little bit and semi-automatic gun reloads. Um, because obviously uh, USS Iowa had some automatic, well, some sort of automatization in, inside the turrets to, to help uh, the crew to, to actually load the gun. Um, it's needless to say that those guns were able to, to fire two shells per minute, which I can guarantee you that none of these guns on, on that ship is able to do at the moment. Anyway, uh going up next uh i'm not touching the torpedoes because this ship doesn't have any <laughs> so uh we won't be touching that that matter uh stereoscopic rangefinder 5 in terms of uh like equipment uh radio direction finder because original ship was also equipped in such uh electronic uh, warfare countermeasures um they actually crew was able to, to detect radio signals coming from from enemy vessels and they could track the enemy using that and definitely improved radar because again USS Iowa had radar basically throughout entire of, of her service um, it was modified several times it was refitted several times but it was always a radar uh, when it comes to armor uh, USS Iowa was quite heavily ticked, uh, well, quite heavily armored. So. Uh, when it comes to belts, it's not as thick as, as you would expect, it's just 12.1 inch. Uh, however, belt extended is where Iowa shines, because uh, she has actually 11.3 inch extended belt. Uh, it is partially true, to be fair. Uh, because extended deck uh, belts for for original ship was placed internally and it was in form of a bulkhead that was actually 11.3 inch thick <laughs> it was basically a wall that was put inside the ship uh, behind uh, like uh, right in front of uh, front tower I, uh, as far as i remember so uh, it was protecting that vital part it was like a wall and behind the wall there was a parpet and uh, and all that stuff if i remember correctly i might be slightly wrong however there was definitely a wall uh, like behind the bow inside the ship and that was that 
extended belt protection. Uh, hence why uh, hence why there is uh, that name all or nothing citadel uh, or armor scheme because it protects all or it doesn't protect anything i guess so yeah uh, or maybe it's something different uh, anyway right let's let's not overextend the video shall we <laughs> uh, 6.5 inch deck uh, basically uss iowa had like three decks uh, one of them was 1.5, which was the very top deck that, that people were walking on. Uh, right beneath it, there was like 6 uh, or, or 5 inch uh, secondary deck. And beneath that secondary deck, there was tertiary deck, which was also like slightly armored. But it was like a half an inch thick or something. So yeah, I, I've put my deck as a 6.5, which is a fairly good amount. Deck extended is 1.5 because that's that's the walking deck, and uh, I believe that it was just reduced to a single deck whenever it's not needed. Uh, Cunning tower. Uh, had 17.3 inch armor, turret 19.5, turret top was 7.3 inch thick and secondaries were protected by 2.5 inch of armor. And that's basically uh, the plan of our uh, fantastic ship or USS Iowa. Alright, so uh, we quickly went through, through the build. So let's get into the battle, shall we? Okay, so as the battle loads, uh, I would like to inform you or remind you that if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to get notification every time I upload a new video. Also, don't forget to share your comments down below. So, <laughs> that is actually an interesting battle. So we are going to play as United States with our USS Iowa and we are going to be facing against British Empire with their battleship. Definitely that's a that's a definitely battleship. So enemy is northwest, so it's right in front of us, so I don't need to touch anything. I will just reduce the speed. Turn on the time compression, and as we are approaching the enemy, which might actually take some time, uh, I guess it's a it's a good moment for me to grab a sip of coffee. I love my coffee. Anyway, uh, it is appropriate moment to to actually tell you something about about history of. USS Iowa because she had quite quite interesting service history so why not as we are waiting anyway I might turn on the bigger time compression uh, right going back to to, to the plot um, ship had quite interesting service record so let's let's go through it quickly I managed to, to gather a few key facts from from her history so so you don't have to search through through all the wiki pages to, to read about that. But I will put the link uh, in the description of that video for you, so you can read the full full version of, of her history, if you want. Anyway, she entered service in 1943, uh, and she was originally assigned to Atlantic Fleet. Uh, her task was to counter threat of German battleship Tirpitz. Um, closer to, to the end of 1943, uh, she was tasked to carry uh, President of the United States and whole delegation to a uh, Tehran conference. And eventually uh, she succeeded in that task. However, as she was performing this task, uh, we just spotted the enemy. Uh, and and opened fire. Uh, enemy also spotted us, so so we got fair exchange this time. 
Oh, and enemy is actually rushing us. Uh, anyway, as as she was performing this task, there was quite an unfortunate uh, event that that uh, actually happens uh, during during uh, that uh, transport mission of, of president and and whole delegation. Uh, one of one of the destroyers that was uh, actually escorting USS Iowa. Uh, accidentally fired a torpedo upon him, uh, upon her, and <laughs> well, eventually uh, USS Iowa performed a hard turn and avoided being hit by by that torpedo. However, as a result, uh, she uh, she also trained her guns on 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 that poor destroyer, which was named William D. Porter, and yet. Basically, that was one of the um, most dangerous moments uh, of of this transport mission. Uh, basically, she, the whole delegation, almost got killed by 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 their own uh, uh, escorts. So it it was like pretty heavy stuff, I would say. Anyway. After she eventually returned from from that escort mission, uh, she was assigned to, to Battleship Division 7 and finally began service in Pacific Campaign. Uh, she remained in service uh, in that Battleship Division 7 up until Decem yeah, December uh, 1944 when she got damaged by Typhoon Cobra and had to return to the US for, for repairs and refit. So uh, during repairs she also had her radar and, and parts of electronics replaced with, with newer models because that, that happens to be a perfect time to, to also refit. Uh, and after a short while, she she returned to to active service in Pacific campaign, or Pacific theater, if you prefer. So, uh, she was tasked to to relieve her sister ship New Jersey uh, at Okinawa Island, and basically what what Iowa was was doing uh, at Okinawa was to give her fire support to. Uh, ground and air units that were trying to, to seize the island. Uh, after Americans succeeded with, with Okinawa, uh, USS Iowa was tasked with uh, providing ground support in, in other uh, landings and, and that's what, uh, what, what she was doing for next couple of months up until uh, Japan eventually capitulated when uh, USS Iowa and USS Missouri were sent to um, to oversee the surrender ceremonies and, and basically transport occupation forces. Uh, after all the ceremonies were done, after Japan actually surrendered, uh, USS uh, Iowa remains in the ports uh, of, of Japan, I can't remember, I think it was in Tokyo, and uh, she remained in, in Japan as part of uh, occupying forces for a short period of time, it was just a couple of weeks as far as I remember, uh, because she received some uh, liberated US prisoners of war and had to take them back to US, so she also automatically received a, a ticket to, to actually get back to the US and that's that's how she finished uh, actually her service as, uh, as occupation forces <laughs> anyway um, she remained in service up until uh, 1949 when she got decommissioned uh, just to be recommissioned <laughs> in 1951, which is two years later, uh, because of Korean War. And yes, uh, US, as they participated in Korean War, 
and they've used all four Iowa class battleships to actually support uh, land operations. So again, providing a fire support uh, for for landing forces, fire, uh, providing a fire support for uh, American operations near shore uh, was very crucial. And basically, that's that's what all four uh, Iowa class battleships were eventually used. Uh, she remained in service up until uh, 1959, when she got decommissioned for the second time. Uh, in 1984, she was again recommissioned. Uh, I don't remember what for. However, uh, it had something to do with, with either conflict or it was some sort of like reserve duty. Anyway. She remained in service up until 1990, when she got finally decommissioned for the third time and never came back to, to the US Navy again. Uh, instead, in 2012, she was moved to Los Angeles, California and became a museum. As for remaining three other Iowa class battleships, they are also preserved as museums across different locations on US coastline. And that's basically it if it comes to, to, to some key facts about uh, US Iowa uh, or USS Iowa. Uh, you, can, you can find more details in, in the links in the description down, down below the video. And as for me, I will now focus on destroying this, this British abomination of a ship. Right, I will turn on five times uh, time compression because we will fall asleep before I will do something. Enemy is having a pretty, pretty accurate guns, which I don't like. However, they they don't. Oh no, they they actually do have quite a lot of them, do they? Let me just quickly recap yeah they, they have like five of these guns so that's that's pretty grim uh, okay so our gun seems to be in fairly good condition for now which is very very good uh, we are taking some light damage and in response we are dealing pretty much the same amount of damage. So we should be fine, the battle should, should go pretty, pretty balanced for us. But that may change uh, if we are not careful. So uh, we are trying to, well we are going to try to, to bow tank anything that that comes our way and we need to watch out uh, for, for enemy shells to, to actually not get our main guns destroyed because that would uh, that would break our plans that's for sure okay so as we are taking light beating from, from the enemy vessel we can enjoy the view of new deco system and, and all that stuff. I have to admit that they look really, really good. Okay, my main guns are getting damaged with with basically every every shot, and I would like to to avoid situation. when my main guns are destroyed that would be very very bad i will switch to he because i believe it might give me better effect on target uh, my secondary guns started to to pepper that uh, that battleship i just scored one one very good hit Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right. 
Oh, oh my goodness. That was a lucky shot. Indeed. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess that's the curse of <laughs> of, of of UK. Yeah? There's something wrong with their bloody ships. I, I can tell you every time I'm playing British or I'm playing against British. They do that to me. They, uh, I was hoping for an epic battle and uh, and they just got hooded. I am very disappointed. I do. Anyway, I managed to uh, end up being victorious, I guess, in, in this battle. So uh, that was a very, very good outcome. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you at least enjoyed uh, me talking about USS Iowa because there was not much battle that I've actually showed you. Uh, too bad, too bad. I was hoping for a long, uh, longer encounter, but well, that's that's uh, that's the game for you. And one time you will get like an hour long uh, battle between those two battleships, and you can't just finish him off, or he can't finish you off. And you get that most epic moment ever. And just when that happens, I'm not having my record. So, well, it always happens. And when you get that short battle, when when the enemy gets destroyed by, by one lucky shot. And now I wish I, I wouldn't just switch the ammunition at, at that point to, to that AP if I would keep firing HG on this guy we would be still fighting anyway thank you very much for watching if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe that really helps my channel and if you want to get informed about my new uploads hit that notification bell button and don't forget to share your comments down below have a great day and see you all later Latur out